Well, good morning, Beaver Dam. This is Pastor Owen coming to you live from Beaver Dam and Rousey's Chapel, and you are joining us for a time of reflections. This is a time where we gather Monday through Thursday to read some scripture together and to pray over the scripture and reflect upon the scripture. And I am glad that you're joining us. If you are joining us live or throughout the day, I encourage you to drop us a line in the comment box. It's a great way for us to stay connected as the church body. It's a great place to put your praises as well as your prayer concerns. Those places where you've seen God active in your lives and those places where you need, uh, we just need a little bit of support. So uh, today is um, Monday, October the 18th. It's uh, definitely feeling like fall outside with the temperatures in the mid 40s, but uh, the sun is shining, the sky is blue, and it is a beautiful day. Yeah, Loretta, it is, it's chilly just like it is in New Jersey probably, maybe not quite as cold. And good morning, Karen. I see Dick and Nancy have jumped on here with us. I'm glad you guys are uh, up and up and uh, getting around this morning. So uh, we have been using the Revised Common Lectionary Weekly Readings as the basis for our time together. And uh, each day we, we read a little piece from the Psalms and we use the same Psalm throughout the week uh, to listen for how it's going to speak to us in different ways. And then uh, today's second reading is um, the Gospel reading for, for this particular week. So uh, let's delve into some scripture, shall we? Our first reading this morning comes from Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. And uh, this morning I'm reading from the Common English Bible. Let's see what the psalmist has for us. Because you've made the Lord my refuge, the Most High, your place of residence, no evil will happen to you. No disease will come close to your tent because he will order his messengers to help you, to protect you wherever you go. They will carry you with his own hands so that you don't bruise your foot on a stone. You'll march on top of lions and vipers. You'll trample young lions and serpents underfoot. God says, because you are devoted to me, I will rescue you. I will protect you because you know my name. Whenever you cry out to me, I'll answer. I'll be with you in troubling times. I'll save you and glorify you. I will fill you full with old age. I'll show you my salvation. Such good words from the psalmist this morning. Well, good morning, Mom. Glad to see you're joining us. And then uh, from the Gospel of Mark, we have a reading from the 10th chapter, verses 35 through 45. Let's listen to these words from the Gospel writer Mark. James and John, Zebedee's sons, came to Jesus and said, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. What do you want me to do for you? He asked. They said, Allow one of us to sit at your right and the other at your left when you enter your glory. Jesus replied, You don't know what you're asking. Can you drink the cup I drink or receive the baptism I receive? We can, they answered. Jesus said, You will drink the cup I drink and receive the baptism I receive. But to sit at my right or my left hand is it mine to give? It belongs to those for whom it has been prepared. Now when the other ten disciples heard about this, they became angry with James and John. Jesus called them over to over and said, You know that the ones who are considered rulers by the Gentiles show off their authority over them, and their high-ranking officials order them around. But that's not the way it will be with you. Whoever wants to be great among you will be your servant. Whoever wants to be first among you will be a slave of all. For the Son of Man didn't come to be served, but rather to serve and to give his life to liberate many people. So uh, 
Such good words this morning. You see Lauren's joining us. Well, good morning, Lauren. So uh, let's take a few minutes here and uh, prayerfully reflect on the scriptures. And as as we do, um, I'll, I'll give us a line from the Psalms to kind of help guide us this morning. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. God says, I'll be with you in troubling times. God says, I'll save you and glorify you. God says, I'll fill you full with old age. God says, because you are devoted to me, I'll show you my salvation. Amen, amen, amen. So we've been using our Wesley study note, our study Bible for some of the notes for our time together. And uh, this morning, the ones for chapter 10, verses 35 through 45 read this way. Jesus again teaches on true greatness. James and John exemplify the same blindness shown by the disciples in chapter 9, verse 34. The ten show that they have no more understanding than James and John. Jesus teaches that the disciples should give up selfish ambition to become great, people of high status. They must reverse their priorities and learn to serve others. John Wesley writes, We worship ourselves when we, when we pay that honor to ourselves, which is due to God only. Therefore, all pride is adultery. It is ascribing to ourselves what is due to God's alone. The Son of Man, uh, if the Son of Man came to serve, his followers should do the same. In contrast to the disciples who were seeking their own glory, Jesus will give his life for the sake of others. Well, some, some good notes this morning. Hmm. 
No, um, our notes point to the idea that here in the text, Mark is following a continual pattern that we see in the Gospel of Mark of the theme that the followers of Jesus need to be humble and be willing to serve others. The notes in our study Bible point to several different verses, references for this theme. From chapter 5, we have the story of Jairus, the, the synagogue leader, who was willing to fall at Jesus' feet and give up his honor on behalf of his daughter. And then in chapter 8, we see that Jesus is telling the disciples that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the leaders. And then he turns and speaks to the crowd in chapter 8 and tells them all who want to save their lives will lose them. But all who lose their lives because of him and because of the good news will save them. And even right here in chapter 10, a few verses before what we read today, Jesus is telling those who are gathered that they must welcome God's kingdom like a child because the kingdom of God belongs to the ones like them. What Jesus is doing here is once again trying to redefine what it means to be first and great for his disciples, and I would say for us as well today. He's pushing the normal expectations and redefining them with the idea that to be great means to be a servant. This sure does go against just about everything the world tells us what it means about what it means to be great. I mean, how often do we see leaders and those that we think are great drawing all of the tension, the wealth, and the glory to themselves? It's a lot, right? But you know, I think if we're really honest with ourselves, we all have some of those traits within us seeking the glory and the honor on some level. I know I struggle with that on occasion. And I wonder, what would the world really look like if we could live into the life of a true servant like Jesus? Leads us to our reflection question this morning. What does it mean for you to be a servant like Jesus? What does that look like? What does that mean? And how can you live into being that person? Well, friends, uh, just something to, to ponder on this beautiful, beautiful Monday morning. Uh, let's get ready to take on the day. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Let us pray. I have to stop. Sarah sealan has got me giggling this morning. I'm the most humble follower of Jesus, right? Just kidding. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Oh, she, she shook me up this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all of the blessings that you pour out upon us. We thank you for the sun shining this morning. We thank you for the leaves and how they're changing colors. The Lord, we're most thankful for the gift of your son who came to walk among us, who came to show us what it truly means to be a child of yours, what it truly means to be a humble servant. God, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit upon us and let it guide us and inspire us to live into the lives that you have for us. Lives of loving our neighbor, taking care of our families, doing what is right to build your kingdom here on earth. God, we ask that you be with all of those who, who might be suffering today, whether they're suffering from physical or mental challenges, and uh, just let them know that you're near. Allow us to see them and to help where we can. God, we ask for all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, friends, remember that this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace. Bye for now.